Hello, welcome back. So, we've spent quite a bit of time just trying to get you to understand what a lollipop moment is. Um, and today I wanna teach you how to create more of them. So, um, I'm gonna talk about a different book today. Um, and they call them defining moments. Um, Drew Dudley coined it as a lollipop moment. You know, the world kind of calls it a random act of kindness. Whatever you want to call it, they all have the same definition. And it's simply that moments that make an experience or moments that make things better or um, just moments that maybe, again, just cause a moment of impact in your life that causes a change um, in you or in others. So... The book that I want to kind of teach from today is called The Power of Moments um, by Chip and Dan Heath. Um, and let me give you a little idea of what their goal is. So it says, while human lives are endlessly variable, our most memorable positive moments are dominated by four elements. Elevation, insight, pride, and connection. If we embrace these elements, we can conjure more moments that matter. If a teacher could design a lesson that his that he knew his students would remember in 20 years later? What if a manager knew how to create an experience that would delight their customers? What if you had a better sense of how to create memories that matter for your children? This book delves into some fascinating myster mysteries of experience, why we tend to remember the worst or the best moment of an experience, as well as the last moment and forget the rest. Why we feel most comfortable when things are uncertain, but we feel most alive when they are not. And why our most cherished memories are clustered into a brief period during our youth. So to unpack that, again, I'm going to give you the cliff notes. This is a great book to read, um, but I'm just going to take a few minutes to kind of give you the highlights of what they're talking about. So when we talk about defining moment, um, those are things where you see moments that are milestones, whether it's a moment of recognition or an accomplishment, or maybe it's more of a moment of transition of like, hey, I got my new job, or I got married, or I had kids, those kind of things. Those tend to be the moments that we remember the most. And what they found when he refers to defined by our youth, um, what they found is most of those big transitions or big milestones in our life happen in a 15 year period. Most happen either from 15 to 30 or maybe like, you know, give or take a couple years, but it's a 15 year period when they put the most memorable days of their lives, whether it's graduating from college, getting their degree, getting married, again, like having kids, those all typically happen in such a short part of our life. And that's like less than 20% of our life. But the most memorable moments are from that shortest period. So their kind of idea is how to create more moments and more milestones and transitions in our lives that we'll remember so we keep surprising ourselves and we keep breaking the script and we're not, we don't live our whole life going, wow, are the good old days behind us? I don't know if you guys watch The Office, but um, at the very end, Andy says, I wish there was a way to know we're in the good old days before they're over. Well, this book wants to take it and say that the good old days don't have to be over. I live in a way, I had a teacher who was a leadership teacher, who said the best year of your life, well, everyone always reflects, and again, it's those big milestones in life, but he said the best year of my life is the one I'm living because I'm going to keep making every year the best year than it was before. So that was um, my sophomore year of college, and every year I've tried to do that. Um, and even in 2020, I looked back, and it was still one of the best years, continuing to get better because I have new goals and a new way of looking at it. So that's what they're trying to do is create more moments, more milestones in our lives to keep achieving and keep looking forward to. That way you don't look back and go, what did I do for the last 20 years? Because the last memorable moment you have is maybe when you were 32 and you're like, what have I done? Um, it's kind of like at the end of a week when you're like, wow, the week went by so fast. What did I even do? Well, you were in a routine, which routines are good, but you were in a routine um, there was nothing memorable that happened, nothing that struck your brain. So you're just like, holy crap, we're on day, I think it today is day 48 or 49 of the year. We already are 49 days into this year. Does it feel like it's been 49 days and you felt every single one because there are things that are happening? Or you're like, wow, we're almost done with February. Where is 2021 going? We just started it. So this is to, again, create a little less monotony um, and try to get you to remember stuff. So... 
Um, the first thing that they talk about is called elevation. So this is the concept of raising the stakes, essentially creating more sensory that's involved um, in breaking the script. It's a surprise. It's, it's making the pressure higher of a moment. So the goals are, you know, thinking about um, the clothes that you're wearing or the food that's involved or the feelings that you have or even the simple of the smell. So the example that they give in the book, there's a couple of them that we're going to hit on, but the one is the John Deere first day experience. Um, and what it is, is when you first start working at John Deere, you have a, what's called a first day experience. They take you through different activities. They make sure that you're involved. They give you certain clothing to wear to make sure you're a part of the group. It's not just a typical first day because what, there is think, what the research was showing is most people don't remember their first day of work because it's pretty insignificant. They shove paper in your face. They introduce you to people. But while you're getting introduced, it's not really a full one-on-one. -on -one. It's more of like a, hey, knocking on someone's office. By the way, this person started today welcome them, see you later. Your first day seems to be pretty insignificant. And what John Deere found was that if they take a whole day and make an experience of it, one, not a single one of their employees forget it. It's actually one of the more fun days for everyone involved because they know it's happening for someone. And it makes them want to work there longer and put it, it makes them a part of a group instantly. So elevate it. So you're elevating the sensory levels. Um, the other example I really want to give, which I, it, again, these are so hard to differentiate because great moments usually have more than one of the four elements but um one of them was we'll talk about it when we get to pride too but college so every year there's a college signing day right and everyone's going to sign to go play the new football team or the baseball team or whatever it is um and these two teachers were just like you know that is such a small population and a representation of the people who go to college so why is it just athletics that gets that um, recognition. So what they did is they sat there and they created in a whole event, they gave them gowns, they printed off, you know, diplomas and declarations of acceptance and what they did. And they took these seniors and they made them, um, or they offered that you get to stand up on stage in front of your family and friends, invite them here. We're gonna have cake to celebrate. Um, you're standing on the stage and you get to present and you have all these options in front of you and you get to tell the world where you got accepted and where you wanna to go to college. Had nothing to do with athletics, but it was the biggest moment of pride. At first, everyone was kinda of like nervous about it and it turned into one of the best events at the school because it turned into, well, what are you gonna tell them on signing day? Like, what are you gonna tell them on signing day? And it was the coolest, in my opinion, it's a really cool thing to read because college is a big accomplishment, especially for a lot of people. And to have them be able to stand up there and give them that th themselves that pride and show their family and friends and say it in front of them, I'm going to whatever university, that's a really cool moment. And so again, it's breaking the script. It's surprising people. It's raising the stakes to where there's pressure. They had to get up there and you know make a decision and give a speech and all those things. Um, it was a really cool idea. So that is elevation. It's ignoring practicality is what it is, what they call it. Um, no one is required to do anything in terms of making your first day special, introducing you a certain way, giving you certain ways to get involved. No one is required to do any of those things. You're not required as a teacher to go build a stage for your students to say where they're gonna go to college. So it's really hard sometimes to like create moments of elevation because practicality gets in of like, well, it's gonna cost more or it's not the most convenient option or we have to really do this and this and this. So you really have to fight that one. It's hard, but you have to fight it and just keep pushing because the elevation is what makes it memorable. The next factor is insight. So these are moments that deliver realizations or like transformations and they can be really good and they can also be pretty heartbreaking. So they can say essentially what they called it is tripping over the truth of maybe I'm not that good. Like the example was a guy got his performance review and he didn't get the raise that every single one of his other coworkers did and he realized like just because I learned these skills in college doesn't mean the real world is going to use them. I need to better myself. And that was a moment of insight where he learned. There's also moments of insights where you just, again, it's, it's tripping over the truth. I guess that's a perfect way to say it. But you finally have a, a light bulb click of, oh, that's what's going on. I either need to correct it or... I, I do feel proud of myself and I am good at this, but it's essentially, it's kind of like finding peaks and valleys and sometimes it's a little bit more of a valley of insight to where maybe what you need to do. 
to keep moving forward. Um, that one's a hard, it's essentially you're learning from yourself or you're learning from others and you have new information coming in. Um, and again, it can be really good or it could be a little bit more heartbreaking. The next one is pride. I mentioned that with college. Um, and there's a couple different ways to include pride into your moments of impact. So the first one is just recognition. Usually we have our big moments of pride where we finally accomplish something or um, we re we're recognized by our peers or our superiors for doing a good job. Um, and so the challenge is, is just to go ahead and consistently recognize other people of, hey, by the way, I saw that. We're coming up with ways to keep giving kudos to the people around you because more recognition seems to motivate people to keep going. And that goes into the other thing, which is called multiple milestones. So again, everything happens in that 15 year gap, right? And so what they have decided is why don't we create more milestones? The example is beautiful because it works for me every day. Fitness trackers. So everyone was like, there's no way, there's no like logic as to why people have to get 10,000 steps in a day. However, what it does is it gives people badges and it gives them incentives and it gives you little tiny milestones to keep working on. Because if you're just, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for exercise, but sometimes if you're just working out because you have to, it, it doesn't work for you. You have to have some motivation. And on Valentine's Day, there was a badge that if I worked out for 60 minutes that day, I got a cool badge. So what did I do? I worked out for 60 minutes that day. Um, there's small milestones. So like, you know, working up to a 5K or... Um, you know, even just small things of like, well, I accomplished this and so I get to reward myself here. It's creating more rewards, but it's also creating just more moments that you can remember because it's something to look forward to. So having a little bit of pride, again, like the college um, signing day, that was something to look forward to. That was something that was going to build them up a lot, have multiple milestones of look what I did, look what I did, I'm getting recognized. Moments of pride are really, really big. And I think that those in elevation are probably my favorite ones. But then the last one is connection. And that one is just creating shared meaning. So what they found is people with um, high purpose versus high passion, um, high purpose actually is more than passion. So when people say go pursue your per or go pursue your passion, um, what these are, what Chip and Dan are saying are the exact opposite of where we're finding people who have purpose and give life meaning, they actually perform more and have a higher rate of um, success and happiness um, versus just pursuing a passion. And the reason behind that is because you're also giving meaning to it. So the example was like a nurse, they're building all these suture kits and they just have to send them out. Well, what they found out is when that when that nurse is involved with the caregiver or the patient and they actually get to see the suture kit being um, utilized and seeing the benefit of what they're doing, they were more likely to sign up to keep making those kits. Or a lifeguard, for example. What they did is they split the lifeguards into two groups. One lifeguard or one group was shown the benefits of being a lifeguard and the things that it'll teach you all throughout life. And then the other group was shown videos of how life, lifeguards were saving people from drowning. That group of people was 43% more likely to sign up for more shifts to work because they found pride and meaning in it and there's connection with other people. So again, that's a quick, very quick, quick cliff note. Um, but I do want to share something with you if I have enough time. What they found is that people, a nurse who found the regrets of dying based on her patients was all of these five things. I'll post this with the video, but um, essentially it comes down to stretching yourselves to your reach, being intentional about creating more peaks in your life, practicing courage and speaking honestly, the value of connection, and creating moments of elevation, breaking the script to move beyond old patterns and habits. So the things that people regret, and that's what a nurse had found on their deathbed, she asked them to write it down. If I wish I wouldn't work so hard. I wish I would have had the courage to live my true self. Um, I wish I had the courage to stay um, in touch with my friends. Those things all come back to what these four elements are. Elevation, insight, uh, pride and connection and they don't like to use it because they don't they don't want to use this acronym because what they said is it's not about creating epic moments but that is a perfect acronym to remember it um, you want to create epic moments not because they're epic but because they include these um, elements so again that was really quick um, it's a very very good book it's a good read um, if you want some insight or more questions about it let me know but otherwise let's go out and try to create more 
epic moments. Thanks for watching.